So we continue uh, discussions uh, regarding Ramadan. And I will probably talk about two or three topics, but in the second part of the football. And the first part, I'm going to dedicate to something someone asked me to talk about, and I think it's quite important. We all know what the society looks like, whether in the UK or outside the UK. We are very quick to blame everyone else. <clears throat> We're quick to blame the media. We're quick to blame the schools. Yet we forget one very important thing. Every generation is built upon the generation before it. We are the sum of our previous generation, the efforts that they put into us. This is us. The new generation are learning from us. Not just from the schools, not just from the media, social media or otherwise, but from their parents, their brothers and sisters, families, uncles, aunts, cousins, friends, all that together. Now, <clears throat> the granted that schools, children will stay in schools for how many hours? Eight hours? Prime hours? Grant, that's true. Yet they still come back home. They still listen to and see their parents. They still spend the weekend with their family. They still spend time with their brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles and cousins. They still go on holiday. And this is something we can control. We ignoring our duties, and I'll, and I'll talk a bit about our duties towards our children, towards our families, because it's not just the children, but it's the man to his wife, the wife to her husband, the man to his parents and his children, as well as the parents to the, as their children. So just because I'm a son and my father's 78, does it mean that I ignore, um, uh, um, uh, can you put my phone on silent as well? Put your phone silent, brothers, um, so we don't get distracted. That's the way down silent. So, we still have a duty to our parents. Respectful duty. So, if we see something wrong from our parents, or from an elderly person, it doesn't have to be our parents. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, He is not one of us. The person who doesn't show respect to the elders doesn't know the value of our scholars and doesn't have mercy and compassion towards the youngsters. So we've still got a duty towards the elders. Children. I, I think I've said that multiple times and I'll continue reminding myself and my brothers and elders and sisters on this. We need to take our children on the same journey that we want to be on. Look at it this way. If we don't do our duty, if we don't do our duty, there's a very good chance that they will not follow Islam and they may be punished that day of judgment for that. And we will be responsible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take each and every one of us. He will ask us about what we've done. But that's not it. He'll ask us on what we're responsible for. So your money, yes. Your health, yes. Your time, yes. Your children, yes. Your wife, yes. Anyone you're responsible upon. In fact, if you're a carer, you'll be asked about the people that you're caring for. In front of Allah, one to one. Why have you done to that person? That's the truth. So... It's not just from a selfish perspective that I want to protect myself, which is true. We want to go to heaven. We don't want to be punished. But if we truly love our children, we take them on the same journey that we want to be on. We teach them right and wrong. And if they get upset about it, fine. They get upset about it. It's fine. But you've done your duty. And how you do your duty, how to teach them right and wrong, how to put them or, or, in, or um, immerse them in an environment where it is easy for them to worship Allah. 
And you all know the story about this man, the serial killer. Everyone knows that story. The man killed 99 people. 99. Serial killer. By any, by any definition. He went, to, uh, he went to someone who, a pious person who worships Allah and said to him, I want Allah to forgive me. Do you reckon Allah can forgive me after killing my friend people? Yes. No, of course not. It's 99. How are you going to, are you going to ask forgiveness from those 99? So a man lost hope and he killed them as well. A hundred. Ah, oh, time passed. He felt guilty again. I want to, I want to return to Allah. So this time he went to a scholar, someone who knows the religion. Is there any possibility that Allah can forgive me? The scholar looked at him and told him, you're living in an environment which promotes bad deeds. It's, it's not going to help you to become a better person. Leave the town or village you're in, go to another town, a town that will help you to come close to Allah. He packed his star, sold everything, packed his stuff, and went on his way. Midway, he died. Angels of mercy and angels of punishment came. Which one's going to claim him to which place? And they argued. The first argued he was on his way. The second argued he isn't anything good, and he, you know, he's he's already killed a hundred. So Allah subhanahu wa taala arbitrated between the two angels and told them. Measure the distance between where he died and between each town. The closer, then take him to where he's going. So if he's closer to the good city, take him to heaven. Closer to the bad city, take him to hell. And Allah ordered the ground to contract so that he is closer to the good city. They took him to heaven. Allah's mercy, subhanahu wa ta'ala, expands everything. But the point that I'm trying to make of the story is the environment. The environment that we immerse our children inside. It's no good if you leave your children to talk to people that will eventually put bad thoughts in his mind. It's not good. All right? So, environments. We spoke, you spoke in the, in the last few weeks about reading Quran with your children. Teaching them Quran. Even if it's one area. Bringing them with you to the mosque. Ramadan's coming in two weeks. We're about roughly middle of Shaban. So two weeks we've got Ramadan. A good, a good opportunity to take your child with you to the mosque. As you're going, take him with you. I know there's school, I know it's going to be a bit late. So what? That's bring them with you. It's fine. When they come back from school, they can sleep half an hour to to to, to refresh themselves and carry on the day. We can work around that. Don't don't let that opportunity um go by. Um, one final thing regarding children. Don't feel, um, don't, um, or treat them the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treated us and taught us right and wrong. If you look at the Quran and look at how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us the right and wrong, you'll see that Allah at one point warned us, but on the other point, on the other side, he showed us good things and he quite encouraged us. That is the way we treat our children. It's not all punishment, 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 punishment. No, 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 no. It doesn't work. Every child is different. You're the parents. You know your children. You know some children don't work with punishment. You punish them too much, poof, they'll disengage. They'll follow you, but I guarantee the moment they're outside, they'll leave everything. And, we, and I've seen it. I've personally seen it. I've seen parents that are very strict with their children. The moment the children can stay A levels and went to university, oof, gone. It's, you have to have wisdom. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, orders us to when we do da'wah, that we use wisdom. This is, this is the part of wisdom. Look at your child, think about it. Ask around if you're not sure. Maybe your child goes well with encouragement. Some children are a mix. A bit of encouragement, a bit of punishment. Some of them slack encouragements. The moment you, you make them proud of what they've done, oh, they're awesome. In fact, uh, one of the things, um, and I'll talk about that in, in the second part regarding the Ramadan, we all know that there's the Zakat The Zakat for this year is roughly about five pounds, thereabouts. This is the minimum, by the way. This is the minimum. <laughs> so if Allah's blessed you, give more. Give the dim, go with the minimum, give more. We all think that it's five pounds. Oh, I'd start to give five pounds. No, be generous. Ramadan's a month to be generous. Once, twice. But this is 
the, the zakat fitr in Ramadan is on every man, woman, and child. Zakat in general, the obligatory charity, is only on someone who's capable, who has the money, and who's not investing and using that money. That's the two and a half percent. And your Ramadan is on everyone. So you, as a, as a father, you have to pay it on your wife. You have to pay it on anyone you care for. So if you're caring for your parents, you have to pay it on your parents. On a newborn baby, yes, you have to pay it on. So this is, this is a good suggestion. In Ramadan, give that five or ten pounds that he's supposed to pay. He's, you're supposed to pay him five pounds. Or he's supposed to pay five pounds. Give him that five pounds. Put it in the box in the mosque. And then when he does that, make a big issue of it. A serious big issue about it. Tell his, tell his mom, tell his, this is a big, he's done zakah. And make a, a party about it. Absolutely. This is, this is key for the children. He'll grow up, but I've done something awesome. He'll feel it. I thought he was stuff for all day when you look into stuff for do stuff for for stuff for and ask him for this. Good for while. In the Hamdulillah, Ahmed wa Nastain wa Stain wa Stafiru. والصلاه والسلام على فاطمه الرسل من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي and all thanks and gratitude to Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the prophet Muhammad whomever Allah guides no one will lead astray whomever Allah leads astray no one will guide let's now talk a bit about Ramadan we all know how to fast i believe we all know that from sunrise to sunset you don't eat you don't drink there's no intimate relation with the with the wife or wife for the husband, that's pretty much what Ramadan is. Plus, you don't do any sense. So if you're not going to, if you're going to stop doing the halal, it makes more sense that you don't do the haram. Okay, so that's, that's we all know this. I think we all come to all this. Let's look at a few things in Ramadan that we can do. Quran, we spoke about that last time. Ramadan is the month of Quran. Read the Quran. If you haven't read it, open the Mus'haf and start reading. Um, and inshallah, we'll try and, 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 and organize on Zoom so it's easy for, for the brothers to, to read. That we can read every maybe twice a week or so. We could all join that Zoom half an hour. Everyone reads a page and, and then logs off and goes, if you want to stay and listen, go for it. Good encouragement. We're gonna, you're going to read this to Quran in the, in the Tarariyah. There is nothing wrong in holding your phone and, and reading the Quran. If you if you if if it helps you to focus, go for it. Nothing wrong with that at all. If you have time, there is something called atikaf. Atikaf is spending time in the mosque. The least amount of time is one hour. The best time to do it is in the last ten days of Ramadan, if you're able to. I know that we've all got work. It's not possible for all of us to leave our work and to sit in a mosque and to, to it will be perfect if we can do that. But if we can't do that, one hour. And the best time, by the way, pray the Fadi and wait until sunrise. This is what you're going to get. If you pray the Fadi in the mosque and then wait until sunrise, wait another extra 15 minutes, pray the Doha, or explain the Doha in a second, you get the reward as if you've done a Umrah and a Hajj. Exactly. So if someone's gone to do Hajj, you've got the exact same reward. Exactly. Again, there's no, it's he's, he's not like he's going to get a bit more because he's actually done the deed. No, you're going to get exactly the same reward. So do two intentions. One intention that you're going to spend that time to get that, that huge reward, but also do the intention of Atikaf. And Atikaf, by the way, the reward for that is two Hajj and two Umrah. If you do Atikaf purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get the reward as if you've done two omnas and two hajj. How, how good is that? And Allah's generous. Don't, don't count for Allah. Allah will give you more. One hour. That's all you need to do. Minimum. Let's revive that sunnah that we don't do. People think about the first time. I have to have a sleeping bag. I have to sleep all. No. You don't have to. One hour is the minimum that the companions told us you can do. Finally, um, as I already talked about, so get the first. 
don't forget the Zakat al-Fitr. Zakat al-Fitr is obligatory on your whole family, man, woman, and child, babies included, everyone. You're responsible for someone, stink five pounds this year. Don't give, don't start with five pounds, give more, be generous. Uh, and don't forget our brothers and our sisters that are starving in Palestine, in Palestine. They are now eating animal food. They are, I've just seen a woman, they're making bread out of sand just to eat. They've got no food. There's no food. There's no water, no clean water. If you know a charity that, 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 that um, the money goes to, to our brothers in Palestine, then pay to that charity. You, you'll find those are charities that you can, you feel comfortable with, go for that. That's the priority. I would, I would say if you're going to pay, pay to our brothers over that. They need it more. If you want to, if you don't want to pay over that, then you can find a poor person that needs it. A brother that is, uh, that's got lots of debts. That's someone you can pay Zakat to. Many, many brothers are, have got lots of debts or sisters, uh, widows, orphans. These are so many avenues that we can give charity. Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to describe him in Ramadan as more generous than the wind. Wind brings with it all the rain for the plants, it bring, brings with it pollen for the, for the plants to, to grow. Sayyidina Muhammad was more generous than that. So be generous in Ramadan. If you're generous, Allah will be generous with you. If you become stingy, then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala won't give you as much as you should have had. Allah, Allah. Allah, Allah